له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على أهدك ووعدك ما استطعت أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت What I've just recited or what I've just read to you brothers is called Sayyidul, Sayyidul Istighfar which is literally the best way to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Concerning this dua, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith which has been recorded by Imam al-Bukhari and others, he said that whoever says this, Sayyidul Istighfar, during the day, with firm conviction in it. So he says it and he has firm conviction in what he is saying. And he dies that day before the evening, he will be from the people of Jannah. And whoever recites it in the evening with firm conviction in it, and he dies that evening before the daybreak, he will be from the people of Jannah. This dua, Sayyidul Istighfar, it deals with one of the most important issues, and it's something that we as Muslims, we should give our full attention to. We need to have the utmost of concern for this issue of turning back, repenting, making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we look at this dua in a little bit of detail, I just want to mention some texts, texts from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us to repent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us not to lose hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, O oh my slaves, don't lose hope. If you sin, you're not finished. You have the opportunity to turn back and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Firstly, I want to mention some of these ayat, just a couple. Firstly, in Surah Az Zumar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي Say to the people, O oh my slaves, O oh my slaves. So perhaps when we begin to read the opening of this ayah, يَا عِبَادِي who are these people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls his slaves? Ya ibadi. Is Allah jalla wa ala referring to the prophets and messengers? So when Allah says, Ya ibadi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't just leave it there. Because then maybe shaitan would come to us and say, when Allah is referring to his slaves, he's referring to the awliya, he's referring to the messengers, he's referring to the scholars. We're too sinful to be classed as the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in his infinite wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't allow us to lose hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Say, O oh my slaves who have transgressed against themselves. So now we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to me and to you. Allah is saying, O oh my slaves, O oh my servants who have transgressed against their own, own souls, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. It doesn't matter what you do, don't despair of the mercy of Allah. Allah will forgive you. Never get to a stage where you think, Allah cannot forgive me. To get to this stage, the scholars have mentioned, the person who says, Allah cannot forgive me, I'm too sinful, this is worse than the sin that he committed. Because what you are doing is you are limiting the mercy and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. doesn't matter what you do, Allah jalla wa ala will forgive you if you turn back to him in repentance. 
So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Indeed, He is the oft forgiving, most merciful. And some of the Salaf, they would say that this one ayah, it is the ayah which brings the most hope to those who are in despair. Those people who have committed a sin, when you are at your lowest point and shaitan is coming to you saying, how could you do that? You're so sinful, you're so bad. You talk about the sunnah, you talk about the Quran, you talk about Salafiyyah, you talk about Islam, but yet you fall into this sin. So you fall into the sin and shaitan comes and he pounds you down and he tries to make you give up uh, hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. The Salaf, the scholars have said that this one ayah, it brings us the most amount of hope. Where Allah says, O oh my servants, O oh my slaves who have wronged themselves, do not ever despair of the mercy of Allah. Because Allah forgives all sins, He is oft forgiving, most merciful. On top of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Nuh, about what Nuh alayhi salam, He said to His people, Nuh alayhi salam, he was trying to get his people to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask forgiveness of Allah. You are committing shirk, turn back to Allah. Ask forgiveness. But look, he didn't just say Allah will forgive you. Rather, Nuh alayhi salam, he taught the people about some of the blessings of seeking forgiveness. Some of the blessings of turning back to Allah and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you in return. Nuh alayhi salam, he said, فَقُلْ تُسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ فَقُلْ تُسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدُكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ, جنات وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا So Nuh alayhi salam, he said, Ask forgiveness, turn back in forgiveness, in repentance to your Lord. Indeed, He is the one who is a perpetual forgiver. He continually forgives. But not only that, if you do this, He will send down from the sky showers. He will rain, He will send rain upon you. He will send the blessing of rain. And He will give you increase in wealth. And He will give you an increase in children. And He will provide for you gardens. And He will provide for you rivers. A man came to Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullah. And he said to Al-Hasan al-Basri, I'm poor. He complained to him of poverty. He said, I'm poor. I don't have any money. I'm impoverished. Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he said, make tawbah to Allah. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then another man came to Al-Hasan al-Basri and he said, I don't have any children. I don't have any children. Al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah, he said, ask forgiveness from Allah. Then another man came and he complained to Al-Hasan al-Basri that my land is barren, my crops are not growing, nothing is growing on my land. So then Al-Hasan al-Basri said the same thing to him. He said, seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he recited this ayah. He told them, turn back, seek forgiveness from Allah إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا Indeed, He is the perpetual forgiver. He will send down upon you rain. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا He's going to send down upon you rain to that man who said, I don't have any crops growing on my land. Al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah said, seek forgiveness from Allah. Why? He will send down the rain upon you. وَيُمْدِدُكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ He will... Increase you in wealth and children. The man who came to Al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah and said, I don't have any children. Al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah said, seek forgiveness from Allah. Because Allah says, if you seek forgiveness, He's going to bless you with wealth and children. He's going to make rivers flow in your lands. So yeah, ikhwan, I've just mentioned a couple of places from the Quran now where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us and commands us to seek forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't let us despair. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Don't despair of the rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have the benefits in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down His blessings upon you. Not only that, but you will save yourself from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves those people who turn back to Him in repentance. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who constantly turn to Him in repentance and those who purify themselves. This is from the Quran. Only just a couple of ayat from the Quran, which shows us that Allah Jalla wa ala loves it when we repent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our repentance. Now I want to bring to you just a couple of proofs from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Showing the virtues of forgiveness. Showing that Allah Jalla wa ala loves it when we forgive. It's narrated from Anas radiallahu an that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah has said. This is hadith Qudsi. So the messenger alayhi salam is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, O oh son of Adam, as long as you call upon me and hope in me, I shall forgive you for what you have done and I will not mind. O oh son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds in the sky and were you then to ask forgiveness of me, I will forgive you. O oh son of Adam, were you to come to me with an earthful or sins, the equivalent of the earth, and then were you then to face me without ascribing any partners to me, I shall grant you the like of that in forgiveness. Subhanallah. Were our sins to reach the, the clouds in the sky, were we then to stand in front of Allah without associating partners with Him, Jalla wa Ala, ask for His forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring us forgiveness the like of our sins and he will not care subhanahu wa ta'ala from Abu Huraira radiallahu an the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said by him in whose hand is my soul I certainly ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent to him more than 70 times in a day more than 70 times in a day, the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, he would do this. This is the one for whom all his past and his uh, future sins were forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Commenting on this, Ibn Umar radiallahu an, he said, we used to count that in a single gathering, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay, I seek the forgiveness of Allah and I repent to him more than 70 times. In a single gathering. How many times do we seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many times do we get involved in a gathering and we don't even think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is not from the way of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, even though all of his sins were forgiven, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would constantly turn back and repent and ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, from the Sunnah of the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, we have the statement of the Messenger alayhi salam. He said, I swear by him in whose hand is my soul, if you were a people who did not commit sin, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take you away. He would remove you and replace you with a people who would sin and then they would seek his forgiveness. And so he would forgive them. Subhanallah. This is how much Allah Jalla wa Ala loves to forgive. From his names is Al Afu, the one who pardons. Al Ghafur, the Al Ghafur, the one who forgives. Al Ghaffar, the oft forgiving. So Subhanallah, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He loves it when we turn to Him. He loves it when we go to Him and we don't associate partners with Him and we stand in front of Him and we humiliate ourselves and we ask for His forgiveness, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. He loves that we worship Him according to His names and His attributes. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah belong the best names, so call upon Allah with those names. Worship Allah according to his names and his attributes. Now let's look at this. Sayyidul Istighfar. With regards to this dua, Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, he quotes this hadith in two places in his sahih. The first place is a chapter which he has dedicated specifically for this, entitled, The Most Excellent Way of Seeking Forgiveness. And also he has entitled this, or he has placed this dua, in the things to be recited morning and evening. 
So Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah, because of this, whoever recites it in the morning with firm conviction, and he dies before he reaches the evening, he is from the people of Jannah. Whoever recites it in the evening, and he believes in, it, believes in it with firm conviction, and he dies before the day, he is from the people of Jannah. Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah is encouraging me and you and everybody who reads that Sahih, look, learn this, learn this dua, recite it in the morning, recite it in the evening. This dua, subhanallah, it shows humble submission. It shows that we humble ourselves in full submission before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We show our need, we show our poverty before our creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. We acknowledge his favors and his blessings upon us. We acknowledge our own sins. We ask for his forgiveness and we acknowledge that nobody will forgive our sins except for Allah jalla wa ala. This dua, it starts with Allahumma. Allahumma, oh Allah, you are calling out to Allah as his slave, as his servant. Allahumma. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, there is no disagreement that this word Allahumma, it means, oh Allah. And we use it when we are calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we want to call upon Allah jalla wa ala and to lower ourselves and to humiliate ourselves before our creator, we call upon him alone, Allahumma. This is the first thing we are calling upon Allah. Are we calling upon the graves? Are we calling upon the dead? Are we calling upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No, we are calling upon our Creator directly without any partners. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. None has the right to be worshipped but you. خَلَقَتَنِي وَأَنَا عَبْدُكَ Oh Allah, you created me and I am your slave. Subhanallah. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant. خَلَقَتَنِي وَأَنَا عَبْدُكَ So here we are affirming things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, you created me. Oh Allah, I'm calling upon you directly. Oh Allah, nothing has the right to be worshipped except for you. Oh Allah, you created me and I am your slave. Lowering yourself, humiliating yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we, when we speak about the fact that Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth, in the Quran, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He uses this. He uses Tawheed al rububiyyah as a proof for Tawheed al ibadah Tawheed al uluhiyah Wa ana rabbukum fa'budun. Allah says, and I am your Lord, so worship me. I am your Lord, so worship me. Allah created us. Allah sustains us. Allah decides our affairs. How then are we turning to others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship? Allah is saying, look, I am the creator of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between them. I decide all of the affairs. So worship me alone. Don't you see that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says this as well in Surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O oh mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those before you in order that you may become righteous. He, it is Allah who made the earth a bed. He spread it out for you. And he made the sky a ceiling. And he sent down from the sky rain and brought forth from the earth thereby fruits as provision for you. So do not set up partners and rivals with Allah whilst you know. You know Allah created you. You know it is Allah who sends down the rain. So don't set up partners with Allah whilst you have full knowledge. Those people, ya ikhwan, who call upon others besides Allah, and we've already dealt with this issue previously, but they are in loss for two reasons. The first reason 
It's this one, he's calling upon Allah, he's calling upon something other than Allah, that which doesn't hear him, that which doesn't benefit him, that which can't bring him any harm, nor ward off any evil. This is the first loss. He's calling upon something which cannot even benefit him. And the second thing, he is missing out on the sweetness, on the beauty of calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So, let's just recap on these two phrases. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. None has a right to be worshipped except you. Khalaqtani wa ana abduka. You created me and I am your slave. Allahumma, we are calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Demonstrating our need. Calling upon him alone. Anta rabbi, we are recognizing tawheed al-rububiyya. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created me and sustains me and he disposes of my affairs. La ilaha illa ant. None has the right to be worshipped but you. We are recognizing that because Allah is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, he is the only one worthy of worship. Khalaqatani. We are recognizing the attribute that Allah is the creator. We are recognizing that we are created beings. We shouldn't become arrogant. We are a creation, a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa abduka. I am your slave, O oh Allah, and I am humbling myself before you. Then the dua goes on. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'at. And I am faithful to my covenant and my promise to you as much as I am able. Meaning, O oh Allah, when I have said, Ana abduka, I am your slave and I'm going to worship you alone, this means, O oh Allah, I am making a promise to you, I'm making a covenant to you, and I'm going to do my best to be faithful to it as much as I am able. As much as I am able. This is why we say, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. O oh Allah, you alone we worship and you alone we turn to help. It's very important to note that we say, as much as I am able. Oh Allah, I'm going to keep my promise. I'm going to keep my covenant to you as much as I am able. So we are recognizing that we are not perfect. We are recognizing that we have weaknesses. We, have, we are recognizing that we're going to fall short. But oh Allah, that which is in our, abil our ability, this is what I'm going to do. And this is supported by the statement of Allah, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will not burden a soul except with what it is able to bear. So you're saying, oh Allah, when I fall short because I'm not that perfect, then oh Allah, please have mercy upon me. Oh Allah, forgive me for my sins. The dua continues, أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the evil of that which I have done. Subhanallah. So you are recognizing first and foremost. Oh Allah, I'm not perfect. Oh Allah, I'm going to do what I can. Whatever is in my ability, I'm going to worship you to the best of my ability. But I'm not perfect. So I'm going to sin. I'm going to fall short. Then, as soon as you say this, you say, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the evil of that which I have done. So once we acknowledge our weakness, we are now seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of that which we have done, the evil consequences of our actions, both in this world and in the akhirah. Again, a point of tawheed. We are seeking refuge in who? In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not seeking refuge in Peach Saab. We are not seeking refuge in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu'u laka bi ni'matika alay wa abu'u bi dhanbi. Oh Allah, I acknowledge all of your favors that you have bestowed upon me. I acknowledge all of them. And oh Allah, I confess, I acknowledge all of my sins to you as well. Firstly, Abu Ulaka bi ni'matika alay. I recognize all of your favors upon me. This is unrestricted, ya ikhwan. This is all of the favors that Allah Jalla wa ala has blessed us with. With iman, with health, with health, with wealth, with children, with safety. We are recognizing all of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah Jalla wa ala is the source of these blessings. Allah says, and whatever blessing, whatever favor you have, it is from Allah. 
فمن الله it comes from Allah سبحانه وتعالى وإن تعد نعمة الله لا تحصوها and if you try to count the blessings of Allah سبحانه وتعالى upon you you wouldn't be able to do that so سبحان الله we are acknowledging يا رب you have blessed me with all of this everything that I have and even those things that I don't have perhaps they are blessing from you because if I had them they would lead me astray you are Acknowledging all of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst, uh, upon you. Then when you do this, you need to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those blessings, you need to give thanks. وَإِن تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ and remember when your Lord proclaimed, if you are grateful, I will increase you in your blessings. But if you deny, if you turn away, then indeed my punishment is severe. So once you acknowledge all of the blessings of Allah upon you, now it's time to give thanks. Now it's time to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we do that? This is by obedience to Allah Jalla wa ala. This is by following the Quran, by following the Sunnah, by following the understanding of those companions and the Salaf al-Salih and all those who follow them until Yawm al-Qiyamah. So we acknowledge all of the blessings of Allah. bi And oh Allah, now I am confessing to you all of my sins. And I acknowledge all of my sins. And Shaykh Abdul Razak al-Abbad, Hafizahullah, he said that this potentially means one of two things. He said, we are acknowledging our sin because we haven't praised and thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he should. So when you acknowledge all of the blessings of Allah, you then say, Oh Allah, and I acknowledge my sin as well. Because for all of these blessings that you have bestowed upon me, I haven't been able to thank you and praise you the way you deserve to be thanked. I haven't been able to worship you the way you deserve to be worshipped. I've fallen short. So Oh Allah, forgive me. And the second thing is when you say, I acknowledge my sin, this means I am acknowledging all of my sins. So, oh Allah, I acknowledge all of your blessings, but at the same time, I am acknowledging all of my sins. Nobody forced me into it. I did it and I am acknowledging all of my sins. So, subhanallah, what have the Salaf said? They have said that this part of the dua, it shows the state of the Muslim. You are either between a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for which you need to be thankful to him. Or you are between a sin which you have committed and now you need to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why some of the salaf they would say, I enter into the morning in between two blessings. And they are, sorry, in between two affairs, in between blessings and sins. So I want to put forth thanks for my blessings and I want to seek forgiveness for my sins. Ya Ikhwan, it's very, very important to note that if we acknowledge our sins to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will definitely forgive us. This is one of the doors to repentance. When you say, oh Allah, I have done this, forgive me. Do not be arrogant. Do not turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn to Allah and acknowledge your sin. I want to mention some of these things, some of the things from the sunnah where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has instructed us, you need to acknowledge your sin. In a hadith which is reported by Imam Muslim, the messenger alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, if the servant acknowledges his sin and repents, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his repentance. And in a beautiful hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, a servant of Allah's committed a sin and then he said, Oh Allah, forgive me for my sin. And then Allah replied and he said, My servant has committed a sin and has known that he has a Lord who forgives sins and punishes for them. Then the man sinned again. And then he turned to Allah again and said, Oh Allah, forgive me for my sin. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, My servant has committed a sin. And he knows that he has a Lord who forgives sins and he punishes for them. 
Then the man sinned a third time. And then he turned back to Allah again and said, Oh Allah, forgive me for my sin. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, My servant has committed a sin. And he knows that he has a Lord who forgives sins and he punishes for them. And then he says to the man, Do what you wish for I have forgiven you. Subhanallah. This man sins. He raises his hands, he turns back to Allah and says, Allah, I have sinned, forgive me. Allah, I have oppressed my soul, I have disobeyed you, forgive me. Allah says, he's forgiven. He keeps doing it, he keeps sinning, he keeps turning back to Allah until Allah says, do what you will for I have forgiven you. This is the need, this is the importance for recognizing our sin. So, oh Allah, I recognize all of your blessings, but at the same time, Abu Ubi Dhambi, I also recognize my sin. I also recognize my sin. And then the end of this dua, Faghfirli fa inna hu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant. So you recognize your sin now. You recognize the blessings. You recognize the sin. And then you say, So, oh Allah, Faghfirli, forgive me. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ For indeed, none can forgive the sins except for you. Like the man in that hadith in Sahih Bukhari, he sinned. He said, Oh Allah, I've sinned, forgive me. The same thing here, which is what we do when we make this dua. Oh Allah, I recognize all of my sins, I recognize them. I've come to them, all of my sins are on the table now, Oh Allah, and I am seeking your forgiveness for them. And the Messenger has told us that Allah will forgive that man. So ya ikhwan, what we find in this dua, it combines between tawheed and istighfar. This dua is all about tawheed, the oneness of Allah Jalla wa ala, and seeking his forgiveness, istighfar. And in many places of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joins between tawheed and istighfar. Allah says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ so know that there is nothing worthy of worship except for Allah and then seek forgiveness for your sin. So here Allah combines between Tawheed and Istighfar. The same as this dua, combining between Tawheed and Istighfar. We have the dua of Yunus alayhi salam. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al what is it first? Tawheed, Tawheed, Tawheed. Oh Allah, none has a right to be worshipped but you. Glory be to you. Indeed, I am of those who have oppressed or I have be, I'm of those who are the wrongdoers. So ya ikhwan, in summary, within this great dua, Sayyidul Istighfar, as the Prophet alayhi salatu salam has told us, the best way to seek forgiveness, which if you recite it in the morning and you die before evening, you will be from the people of Jannah bi idhnillah. If you recite it in the evening and you die before morning, you will be from the people of Jannah bi idhnillah. This dua, it contains and acknowledges all three categories of Tawheed. It acknowledges the fact that Allah Jalla wa Ala created us and that we are his slaves. And it recognizes that none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make this promise to fulfill our covenant, to do our best with as much as we are able. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our deeds and the evil consequences of our actions. We recognize all of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us and then we recognize all of our sins as well. After recognizing our sins, what do we do? We seek forgiveness for our sins. And then we affirm that none can forgive us for our sins except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's imperative. And I remind myself and you brothers and sisters, learn this dua. Sayyidul Istighfar. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant khalaqtani wa ana abduka wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma istata'at a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'at abu'u laka bi ni'matika alay wa abu'u bi dhanbi faghfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant recite it in the morning recite it in the evening without fail this should be something that after you pray your fajr salah after you pray your maghrib just sit down and recite this dua 
And bi idnillahi ta'ala, if you recognize and you understand and you affirm everything that it contains because it is the best way of seeking forgiveness, then when you die, bi idnillahi ta'ala, you will be from the people of Jannah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this from us and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people of Jannah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of Tawheed and Sunnah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us swords against the people of Bid'ah and make us swords against the people of Shirk. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise us with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions and the and the pious and the scholars and the martyrs and the companions of the messenger alayhi salatu salam and ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk